Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. There has been an extension on the TRO for the release of IPI's tax information. Also tonight, two burglaries have happened earlier this week, and this time there is a target. And if you plan on swimming in the ocean the rest of this week, there is something you should watch out for. In sports, the 35th Fishing Derby was fun, delicious, fun, and delicious. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Looking for a truck that's reliable, durable, and a great value? Then drive Tacoma. Tacoma is Saipan's most popular truck. Look around. Everyone drives Tacoma. That's because 9 out of 10 Tacoma trucks sold over the last 10 years are still on the road. If you drive a truck for work or play, you need Tacoma. Good looks, rugged styling with the latest technology, and power when you need it. After all, Saipan is Tacoma territory. Hoffa Day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, July 25th, 2019. Breaking news in federal court. The temporary restraining order to prevent the release of all of Imperial Pacific International's tax information has been extended yet again. Earlier this week, the Attorney General's office filed to remove the TRO in federal court. The TRO was granted by Associate Judge Kenneth Govindo, giving time for the judge to decide whether certain parts of IPI's tax information dating from 2015 to 2018 should be kept confidential. While the Commonwealth Casino Commission states that all of the tax information should be released as shown in Public Law 19-24. The extension on the TRO given by Judge Govindo was to expire tonight at midnight, but federal court granted another extension that lasts until Friday, August 2nd. Stay with KSPN as we continue to follow the case, Commonwealth Casino Commission versus Imperial Pacific International. Some burglaries have been occurring around the island this week and have been targeting a specific group. Tourists, they come to Saipan to soak up the sun, take photos, try some new food, swim and relax. But one thing they don't anticipate is getting robbed. This week, two separate auto theft and burglaries have occurred and tourists have been the victims of both. Both were um, tourist vehicles were involved. Uh, the first vehicle at the last command post was actually, I believe, a yellow Hummer. And then the second um, incident was a yellow Camaro at the um, at Ladder Beach in Obzen. So the first, um, the first case which is the female individual, they left their purse inside the uh, Hummer and um, you know, walked around the area taking pictures with a group of friends. Um, the number of friends were, was not stated on the report, but uh, they were more than, uh, more than a few. So they were taking pictures for about 40 minutes or so, went back into the, um, to the rental vehicle and noticed that they, their uh, uh, purse was uh, missing or was not found um, so immediately that's where they made their way out to the uh, police substation in uh, Garapan and they saw an officer outside flagged down the officer officer walked over to them and then uh, took the report then he eventually called it in and asked for a case number and just followed protocol after that um, also on the same day uh, we had another one at the Ladder Beach this individual um, went over to Ladder Beach and they immediately noticed that there was no cars in the parking lot or you know, nowhere near. 
so they parked their vehicle, which was a yellow Camaro. It was convertible with a canvas top. And then they walked down towards the beach to take uh, family family photos, uh, maybe about 15 minutes. And then the uh, the victim, the father, um, decided that it was, uh, he was going to head up to the his rental vehicle to get his uh, backpack. Um, upon walking over to his rental vehicle, he immediately noticed a uh, cut on the canvas top of the rental vehicle, and that's when he immediately called 911. Then officers were dispatched to the scene. Pingalinen says although both occurred on the same day, they have not proven to be related yet. Uh, right now, uh, we do notice that you know it is two two cases that you know uh, is has happened at a tourist uh, location, but. Uh, we can't say for certain that it is, um, you know, it is the same individual or individuals that are targeting these uh, these areas. We do have uh, CIB detectives on this, and uh, they're working uh, on, um, you know, trying to find out more information on uh, what vehicles came in, who came in, um, where can they get um, CCTV footage of any establishments nearby. If you are out in a not so busy location, whether you are a local or a tourist it's always safe to follow these steps. So many times, you know, also we do know that you know, a lot of, we have a lot of visitors come by and want to see like the north side or these tourist sites. Uh, one thing that we can say is, you know, either uh, bring your bag with you, uh, try not to carry cash when going out to these places or these areas and try not to leave it in the, in the vehicle. Um, but, you know, we do have a lot of people that kind of have uh, big purses or big bags that they bring with them all the time and everywhere. Uh, try to leave that, those at home at your hotel room or try to leave them at, you know, like a friend's house before going out to these sites. Especially if you know that the duration that you'll be spending at these sites is a little bit longer than usual. Um, you know, we highly encourage to uh, prevent uh, these kinds of uh, incidences. Missing items from both burglaries include a Chinese passport, Chinese driver's license, a purse, cosmetic products, Adidas sling bag, credit cards, and Chinese currency and U.S. dollars. The suspect or suspects involved in the burglaries have not been tracked down yet, but the Department of Public Safety is still investigating. If you have any information relating to the burglary and thefts that occurred this week, call 911 or contact Crime Stoppers at 234-7272. Pingalinen says if your tip leads to the arrest of the individuals that committed the crime, a $1,000 reward is given. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. For those of you thinking about spending some time at the beach or in the ocean the next several days, you may want to watch out. According to the Emergency Operations Center, there is a possibility of box jellyfish along the shorelines and beaches of the Marina Islands for the next few days. The Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources in Guam, Department of Agriculture, says these hazards are in effect through Sunday afternoon. Box jellyfish can be distinguished by their cube shape and are very venomous. Swimmers are advised to report any sightings of the box jellyfish to lifeguards, hotel management, or authorities, and to avoid any contact, especially touching. If you are swimming for long amounts of time, wear a full body wetsuit. There are about 250 Coast Guard families on Guam and four Coast Guardsmen here on Saipan. And the 26th Commandment of the United States Coast Guard, Admiral Carl L. Schultz, was on island to recognize the important roles his men and women do here in the Marianas. The Coast Guard has a rich 150-year history in the Pacific. Had a chance to meet with our Coast Guardsmen. When you add in the families, it's probably more than 600 Coast Guardsmen and families over in Guam and again here today we spent some time with the three Coasties here that are in uniform. We have one civilian here who's off island right now. It's just uh, my first time in the region here out in Oceana so a chance to learn a little bit about it and spend some time with our Coast Guardsmen here, issues in their mind and again participate in the liberation activities. Known as the lead maritime first responders, Admiral Schultz says when it comes to disasters like Typhoon Minka and Super Typhoon U2, the U.S. Coast Guard does their part in assisting the islands. We worked with FEMA during that. We worked with local authorities, uh, defense support of civil authorities with DOD. You know, one of the things we talked about with the governor, lieutenant governor here, one of the things we talked about with governor in, uh, in Guam was how important those relationships are. So we train to be ready. And then at the end of the day, you know, in an island like this, Coasties are impacted individuals and then they're first responders. And uh, I think it's a great relationship here. You know, coming to Saipan, I was not here in the immediate aftermath, but 
the island's recovering remarkably well. I don't want to diminish some people that are still probably having some challenges in recovery, but uh, it's team ball when you deal with a crisis of the proportion of man gut and, and you two in the recent years. Those are pretty tough storms there. The Admiral is looking forward to making more improvements for the region. This geostrategically, the Pacific's a, a critically important region. We talked about the history. We just had a couple of national security cutters, one at a time supporting the Indo-Pacific commander, working in the East and South China Seas here dispensing you know some of what I call Coast Guard goodness there where we model model maritime governance and behaviors and um, and that part of the world is uh, some interesting things going on so I think the Coast Guard is important there. With the 75th Liberation Celebration for both the Sinai and Guam coming to an end, Admiral Schultz gives his views on how far the Mirianas has come. And you can see the multiculturalism of Guam, you can see the military ties there, you can see the respect that the, uh, the citizens of Guam hold towards the armed forces. I mean, our families are, are treated very well there. They're very integrated in the community. So I think it, it's very important. And, you know, uh, I think 75 years ago seems up forever, but we're a nation with a short history here. And I think recognizing the importance to the, uh, to the citizens of Guam, the Chamorros, um, it was very moving. It was very exciting to be there. It was just an honor to, to take in some of that multicultural heritage that, that goes with the region here. Coming up, we head over to Herman's Bakery to check out a local dish. Stay tuned. Get the phone plan you're looking for at IT&E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any IT&E store or call us to learn more. IT&E. Explore your world. edition of Local Bites. I am here at Herman's Bakery who is celebrating 75 years and for those of you who didn't know they are the oldest locally owned business not only in the CMI but Micronesia. Now let's head inside where line cook Greg Camacho is going to teach us how to make a local dish. Let's go. It began in 1944 in Kapsasuki. My grandfather was asked, because he was an apprentice to a baker when he was younger, to bake bread for the people in the camp. And we've been baking bread and doing other things such as catering since. The main big seller is our sweet bread and our Pullman bread. Um, but as you can see, the shelves behind us are full of cookies and pastries, and um, like you said, as well, cakes. Monday through Friday, lunch specials. Um, our snack bar is open from 6 a.m. to about 1, 1 to 2 p.m. Depends on how many people we still have in here. 
and um, our lunch specials do rotate every week, uh, every month, they're different all the time. I got my hairnet and my apron, and let's get in the kitchen. All right, I am here with Greg in the kitchen. So what are we making today? Today, man, we're making cup and pika, a uh, local delicacy. Yeah. And how do you pronounce it one more time? Cup and pika. Cup and pika? Yeah, cup. Right? Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right. We'll go ahead and add some onion in first. Then we'll add our garlic. We're going to toss the chicken in. So you start with the onion and the garlic. Yes, ma'am. And the oil and you throw in the chicken. Yes. But how long do you let these uh, simmer together? Probably for about five to ten minutes. After that, we'll go ahead and put on some soy sauce. And what is some this? Some apple cider vinegar. Two teaspoons of lemon pop. A little black pepper. pepper. A little dash of that. Yes. So is this the spicy part of the dish? Yes, ma'am. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about spice, but I'm going to give it a try. It's stony. Grind up uh, red pepper that we make here. It's grind up with garlic, vinegar, and a little bit of salt. So we're going to add it to the cotton pika. This is what gives it the uh, cotton pika taste. That's why they call it cotton pika. Oh, okay. I'm nervous. We are going to let this sizzle for about 20, 25 minutes. Get it nice and ready to eat. And for those who don't know what the word pika means, it means hot and spicy. So what makes this dish local? Most of the time, the traditional style We'll get a fresh chicken. We'll raise our chickens and use the fresh chicken that we grow and we raise. Then we'll chop that up. So that's one reason why, because it's local. Our doni that we use. Ooh, this is looking delicious. The cut dome pika is done. Now let's plate it. All right, put a little rice on there. Yum. And some extra flavor to add to it. Pop it off. Yum. All right, let's give this a try. A little bit of this local chicken. Delicious. Thank you so much, Greg, for teaching us how to make this local dish. It is oh so good. Hopefully everybody can make their way out here. Every week is a new dish. This week is local. Next week, who knows? So make sure you make your way out to Herman's Bakery located off of Airport Road. Catch you next time. Thank you, Ashley. It looks good because it is. All right, coming up, the one story that I look forward to the most every summer. Smiling at Smiling Cove. Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, 
call the hotline at 287-8537. Bubblegum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. You can get $250 for your old sofa set right now. It doesn't matter if it stinks or if it's stained or if it's out of style. You can get $250 trade-in credit for your old sofa set. Get a new sofa set right now with no stink, no stains, and lots of style. Yeah! Yahoo! Come see us today at Dial Rent to Own. When a sports fans. Brennan sports fans, any list of best Saipan sporting events has to include the annual Fish and Derby. I especially enjoy it, not only for the competition, but also the camaraderie, as you shall see. Sunday afternoon, Smiling Cove, packed tighter than a can of sardines. Everyone out to enjoy fresh air and fresh fish. Let's take a stroll for the KSPN2 experience. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's up? There's what's up right there. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, we just came here to support all the fishermen. Yeah. So what? Uh, but there's a problem. We wait for them there. They face the other way. Even though if you don't catch anything, wave to the people, man, because the people will make you have a luck next time. What you got? What you got on that plate there? Uh, yesterday's uh, yellowfin. <laughs> a lot of yellowfins yesterday. And that's one from this tournament. Yeah, and this is the second topperware. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what you got. Let's see what you got. I know you do a lot of work to get ready for the. But so we got sashimi. That's uh, the yesterday's catch. Yesterday's catch. Yes, yellowfin. But this is all the way from Alaska, right? Oh boy, that fish had to go. <laughs> that boat had to go a long way. Where'd they catch that sausage? North of uh, Managa? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Just right here, honey. Oh right. Over there in the end. Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, say something, you guys. So far. Say something. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Say something. Come on, boys. Say something. Now, is that salmon from uh, this tournament? Uh, Alamogan, actually. Alamogan. Oh, very good. Alamogan. Uh, very good. Alamogan uh, salmon. Very good. Yeah. Herbs. I'm not going to bring it. Turn around. Turn around. Hey, there's Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob, what's up, Bob? Oh. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios is a regular at this derby. Nice to see you, Bob. Nice to see you at this tournament. You come every year, right? Yeah. Why do you come every year? He started it. He started it. He started it. Yeah. Don't leave him without it. This is your baby, right? Thank you. This guy skip, skip it on. I gotta give it to uh, SFA or Saipan Fishing Association. You know, when I'm walking around, I see so many kids here. Did you notice that? And that's what it is. That's what it's all about. To bring awareness to our fishing community and fishing. <laughs> this is our life. And life is all about eating. This ocean not, motion. This, this ocean motion. What is this? Yeah. Marlin. 
Marlon. What's happening here, man? Party, dude. Not <laughs> too bad. <laughs> uh, I'm big. Ooh, ooh. Quahanza Sahib, man. Wow. Yeah, it's all big Marlin right over there. <laughs> all right, brother. Take care. I got this. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> Where's Bob? Oh, yeah, it is. Bob. Oh, hey, Bob. Hi. Bob, thank you for your service. Thank you for coming out here today and supporting the fishermen. Yes, sir. Hey, Bob. Hey. Hey. We got this. What do we got? Cheetos. Is that, what kind is that? What kind of fish Cheetos. is that? Cheetos. What kind of fish is that? Orange fish? Cheetos. <laughs> Squid. Uh, well, it's really good. Okay. Does it come with a drink? Yes, it does. Oh, that's your best part. Yeah. Which one do you like better, tuna in a can or the real tuna? Real tuna. Real tuna, right? <laughs> hey! Hey! Did you get this, Bob? What do you got here? Scat. What are you eating? Salad and we got some salmon. Salmon from uh, Tinian? Jotun. Oh, Jotun. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the boats coming in? Beautiful. Oh, oh. hi. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of this tournament here tonight? Oh man, it's Thailand. This is the oh, island, right? Hot. This is the best of Saipan right here. The you best. agree? We, it is. We have Saipan, we have Guam, Tinian, and Rhoda. Mm. It's made for old folks like us, you know? Pick of the sea? No, it's it's soft and chew. I mean, just perfect where you don't have to do too much chewing and it doesn't hurt your dentures. Wait, let me take my dentures out first. Nah. <laughs> Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total resistant exercise or TRX helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today's high 88, the heat index here in Susupi 105 below 78, humidity 70%. Tomorrow partly cloudy isolated showers, northeast winds 5 to 15, high 90, low 79, seas 2 to 4 feet for the rest of this week. Sunrise 557, low tide at 854, high tide 309, sunset 649. Pretty calm out there. And thank you both for that weather report. And that derby looked delicious. It was. I, you know, I, I guess you could see I had a good time. I always have a good time going there because everybody's in a good mood. Yes. Everybody's happy. It's a Sunday afternoon and uh, there's no worries, no stress, and it's time to be with your family and your friends and just sit back and relax. Yeah, and that's like a, what it's all about. Like you said, a delicious and fun time. I just said two it. good descriptive said words. Said it twice. Yeah, fun absolutely. and delicious and fun and delicious. There we go. That's it. And thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your night. Tune in tomorrow night at 6. Good night.